and we are back with the vacuous perspective i'm val nate it's great to see you again what's happening thanks val um yeah well not much tonight on the weekend i did do the the ridge walk the yeah, sterling yeah. range ridge walk that i talked about oh my god okay yeah so that was um that was challenging man yeah, I mean, you go big, don't you? You you go well. What's the biggest one I can do? You know, you know, within reason. You know, you you're going after big things. This it's going to be hard. You just to recap. Um, isn't it, isn't it one of the hardest? Like one of the climbs is one of the hardest. It's on like the 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 to do list for for climbers. Yeah. Oh, I, I would say so. If you're a hiker in WA, it's definitely on the list. Yeah, it's on the list. I did. It, it's rated as the hardest hike in WA, okay. and the sixth hardest in Australia. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, you didn't, you didn't expect to breeze through this, did you? Uh, no, but you're always wondering how hard can a hike be? Like it's walking. All right, tell us. Well, it's only. It's only 19 and a half or 20 kilometers from point to point. There is a six, but they, if what they don't tell you is there's like a 6K walk along the flat to get to the start point that you can't drive. So it's just annoying because they list it on the map as being like A to B and it's 20Ks and you're like, great, you know, you start the climb of one of the mountains like straight away. But no, in the reality is you have to park your car 6Ks away and then walk with your full pack for 6Ks, which is just a, you know, a bowl lake. Okay, yeah, so you got to walk to the walk. Yeah, you got to have a little walk, a little warm-up. But, then, you know, you should be welcoming the walk to the walk, right? It's all good practice. You're getting some 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 training in just before the walk bit. Uh, you would think so, but the first – we went from Ellen Peak to Bluff Knoll. You can go either way. You can start Bluff Knoll and go to Ellen Peak. Um, and, and the walk is after, after Ellen Peak or before Ellen Peak if you do that first. And – we've got a full pack we've got like all our water so you got like all your food all your water and so you're walking with the heaviest pack the heaviest point of the trip and you're just doing six k's anyway that's fine i can't complain about walking (laughs) on a walk you know i think i'm not properly uh grasping the six kilometer aspect of the six k's because six k's when you say six k's when you're doing it i just think yeah that's fine but that's not me doing it no, and you, it does wear you down. Like you, you are thinking um, you try and get there as early as possible. We started at about six thirty, and and then you realise that oh well, you know, it took it about an hour and fifteen minutes to to do that first six k's. But that gives you a good perspective about what we're dealing with, right? Because mm. just remember that we did without pushing it, just just walking and talking. We did six k's in an hour and fifteen minutes on flat. There were sections of the walk where a kilometre took us best part of an hour mm, wow so clearly there's some obstacles and some elevation in, involved with it like that was not uncommon at all uh, uh, forgive me do you, is this the is this a knives out track did you have to get the knife out was this one of those ones a knife out what do you mean by that you know what i'm saying chopping down a few trees getting oh you know, i was bush bash I, I was yeah, just kicking yeah. them i was just kicking them kicking stuff i was kicking the trees um you have to get into the track, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was making, making my own sort of track. I was forging a new one, um, but only when you get lost and when you're trying to find your way back to the main track. And that happened about, I don't know, 10 times. Like probably once every hour you lose the track. And you just have to recognize it. And well, what? I don't know how you do it without GPS. This is what was freaking me out a little bit because I have the GPS route on my watch. And although the granularity isn't great, one centimetre on my watch was about 300 metres. So it's hard to tell. So once you get about two or three millimetres off, you realise it. You can see the difference between where the, like your lodge, mm-hmm. your splodge is and where the track is. But then you're about 100 metres off. Okay. So you know you're like, oh, I need to kind of go left for 100 metres. The track's somewhere over there. And then yeah. And then when you find the track again, is it obvious? You're like, oh, yeah, this well, is obvious. Some, some parts are obvious and some parts aren't. Some parts you don't know, but you know you're heading in the right direction because you got the GPS. So you just think, well, it's around here somewhere. I might be on it. I can't find it. And so I'm just going to keep plowing. So do purists go out there, no GPS? I think definitely, yeah. Do they? I think, 
Well, I, I don't really? know. I don't know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't know how exactly they do it, but have you heard of orienteering? Of course. I think that's what you're doing. You you, you have to count your steps. Got compasses. Uh, you got a compass. You got a, you got a map, and you, you take like waypoints where you, you there's certain features of the topography that you will uh, that you will kind of note, and then like <laughs> you, so you, you're aiming for one thing. So on your map, you will say, "I'm aiming for this point that's about a kilometer away, this direction," and you will keep kind of counting your steps and your direction and stuff to keep yourself on track. Yeah. And then you have fallback spots where you go, oh, I'm aiming for this thing, but if I get to this ridge or if I get to this hill behind it, then you know you've gone too far or whatever. I don't really know how exactly it works. <laughs> Look, I think I did it on a camp once and I remember it being a fucking great time. Good on them. Right. Walking around the forest. It was good. No, I like, I like walking around a forest. It's good. But we did better than when we got lost on the Bibberman track. Even yeah, though we so got lost, you're expected to get but, lost. Yeah. But um, was the GPS enabled on the Bibbleman? No, nah, no, we didn't. See, this is the thing. Like you've got all this technology at your disposal. should be using it, absolutely. Well, we did this time. Uh, weather yeah. came in on the Saturday. So we did it Saturday and Sunday. Mm. And you can do it. They recommend you do it over three days to really just like, you know, chill out and have a good time. But. We didn't have three days, and it's very common for people to do it in two, just an yeah. overnighter. So we did two thirds of it on the Saturday. Just really tried to break the back of it, and then just finished it off on the Sunday. And the, yeah, the, we knew that the, there was going to be a little bit of weather Sunday morning, but <clears throat> like it was, it was only supposed to be a little bit of rain. So we just decided to to roll the dice. But when there's weather, it gets amplified when you're mm. up high. Yeah. That's something I don't think we were anticipating. It rained quite a lot on the Saturday night. It would have been scary. It's all part of it, right? Yeah, it is. It was super cold and water started just I my my I borrowed my tent from a friend and I think that the waterproofing is starting to come off because there's like this little waxy residue that that I find like after I sort of wash it down and like dry it in the house. There's all this kind of like this sort of like big dandruff that's coming off it. Okay, so it's losing its ability to remain waterproof. Well, that's what I think is happening because on the Saturday night when it was raining, mm. it was sort of dripping. There's like the, the tent set up so it's got a waterproof layer and then you, you peg that out and so it doesn't touch the inner mesh layer. So you've got no, two No layers. touching. No touching, no touching. But you have to peg it out so they're not touching. But the wind <laughs> blows it and then they touch. And the water oh, no. had been the water seeps through the top layer. I don't think it's supposed to do that. And then touches the the inner layer and then deposits little kind of like droplets. If that happens a few times and the drops get bigger, <laughs> and then they start falling in. Okay. So all very slowly. But um, I could hear every now and then I heard a drop or I felt a drop or you know, and I was like, <sighs> fuck, it's like it's raining in here. You're gonna feel. You're gonna get it drop, aren't you? You're probably no, gonna say. You're probably okay. gonna say to her, this friend and say, "Hey, man, thanks for letting me borrow the tent. Um, here's the tent back. By the way, a uh, bit of drippage. Definitely go and note the drippage. And 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 he might say, or she might say, you're gonna get a bit of drippage. I don't think you're supposed to, man. Because it's supposed to get really rainy. You know, yeah. Um, if and that's what I said, this dandruff I think is is related to this drippage issue um yeah okay you're gonna maybe spray it with some wd-40 and oh, see, what, see what happens because yeah. who knows man you might just make it waterproof again displaces water it's all in the title yeah we're not quite sure like we, we don't know if we've reached the <laughs> we understand the full capabilities of this this product mm. so anyway water like but the problem with a bit of water coming in right is it's super cold like I think apparently it was supposed to be negative four that night, the Saturday night. You were a bit elevated. Yeah, we're a bit elevated. And the winds, the winds kind of uh, kicking. I know you're in a tent, but anyway, it, 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 this, we're this also particular outside tent on the mountain. Airy. So, <laughs> <laughs> mm. but then the drippage happens, and then every now and then I would, um, I would, I'd like run my hand along the sleeping bag, yeah, and nice. I'd feel water. Um, and I'd be no, like, no, I feel no. like it's wet. And I'm like, fuck, how much water is coming in here? And then, <laughs> so this is before I went to sleep. And I thought, if I go to sleep oh, no. and I'm not paying, if I just let this happen, um, what happens if I just wake up and it's soaked through? 
and it's like four, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., I've actually got like a real like – if I if my inner layers start getting wet, I've yeah, got a real yeah. problem here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I couldn't really sleep when the rain was happening because I was monitoring how much water is actually coming into this thing. Oh, so it didn't rain all night then? It, most, it rained most of the night. But then oh, what happened no. is around – maybe 11, so I reckon it was about two hours. I went to bed, or maybe probably I went to bed about 7.30 to be honest, um, <laughs> or 8 maybe. Around 11, I, I was like, this is kind of ridiculous. Like I can't sort of yeah. – well, I couldn't fully switch off and go to sleep because it was, it was windy and I could hear the water and stuff, stressing a little bit about how cold it's going to get. The last, I had all my clothes on, but I hadn't put my gloves on yet. That, that's my emergency, and it's an emergency for a reason because I need mentally – to know that I've got another bullet in the chamber. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Because if I put that, if I started with that, where do you go? Mm. Yeah, exactly. You're all rugged up. You got nothing else to. There's no safety net. No safety net. So that was my safety net. I, li- I left those off, um, and then around, yeah, around eleven, I thought, look, I'm not going to drown in this thing. I don't think the water is coming in at such a rate that I'm going to have a huge problem. So I put my earplugs in to help with the noise the wind and I went to sleep and I slept like a baby and everything was a little bit wet in the morning, but like no, nothing was like, you know, proper, proper saturated or anything. Um, and I put my gloves on That wouldn't on have been well. a good start to the morning is, is that would have been a terrible start to the morning. But it didn't matter in the morning because I knew I was going to be wet from the re- for the rest of the day anyway, because it was still raining. Let's go. Ready to rock. So like as long as I got through the night, I'm like, yeah, no, it doesn't matter if I'm all wet now because like it's, it's go time. Yeah, um, fair call. And also just before I went to sleep because it was pretty damn cold and I knew I was going to sleep, I put my gloves on because I was like, well, if I'm ever going to put on – if I'm ever going to fire my last bullet. Oh, yeah. When, it, when, when, yeah when's, when, when are you going to need it now? This is it. This, this is, is it. This is it. So no. I put it on and no. uh, it was fine. So anyway, it was actually – I actually slept pretty well after that. I think I was pretty tired. Um, yeah, I'll send you a couple of photos, uh, crazy, it, it, you know, the elevation's crazy. You're grabbing onto trees and bushes and things, uh, probably fell over twice, but like kind of into a bush once and not, not sort of dangerous just cause it really, there's no, the, the track is just a joke. Like there's a lot of it's like one time you're just going along the side of a mountain in like just kind of bushes and just stepping on every bush. There's all these little kind of reedy type bushes and you just step yeah. on the base of those to keep you That's going. Some, and Some pretty hard words there for the uh, track people. Um, but no, deserved. And walked it out uh, last on the Sunday. It was um, great. Yeah, raining and pretty sideways up the top mm. of Bluff Knoll. And then you just get to walk down the stairs on the far, on the, on the normal side of Bluff Knoll. Um, and then that's, yeah, that was, that was me. Yeah. Yeah. You too. With the with the rain, you would have been around for the famous 2010 March storms, right? You remember this? Oh, the Perth storm. Yeah. yeah. The most costly natural disaster in Western Australia's history. Was it? Yeah. I mean, a lot of cars got fucked up, as I remember. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, $1.08 billion price tag. One bill. One bill. And uh, it affected a lot of people power-wise. Power, power wise. I think 400,000 maybe houses were knocked out. I don't know if that – maybe 160,000 houses were knocked okay. out. Okay. So big storm. That. Big storm. Took out all um, the stained glass windows in the uh, Winthrop Hole at UWA. Apparently it did millions of dollars of damage there. Wow, there you go. Um, also, because it's sort of relevant because the Hurricane Ian is sort of – um, done its thing in America, um, mm. pretty, pretty crazy uh, natural disaster hurricane. Because, um, you know, when you get a storm, you get wind, yeah? Yeah. But then you get another thing called gusts. So you got wind, wind, regular wind. Regular, regular wind, yes. Regular wind, which is just the wind that's happening Regularly. Regularly, yeah. And then you've got the wind gusts. Oh, maximum wind. They're gusty. They're shorter than the regular wind, but they're usually quite sharp. Extra wind. Bit of, so they got the wind and the punchy, wind punchy. gusts. 
Yeah, the okay. wind gusts for Hurricane Ian are around the 212 kilometers an hour mark. Oh, he is a gusty boy, isn't he? Very gusty. But so mm. just to compare, because I wanted something to compare that too. I don't I can't think of, has there been any other particularly destructive storms? I, I don't this is probably the big one, right? Uh what in Perth? Yeah, or, in Perth. That, that I only remember of the one. Yeah. Okay. okay. So And they happen up north all the time, right? You get cyclones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cyclone Absolutely. city up there, but no, not not in Perth, yeah. But um and, and it did hit up north as well. It, I think it I think that's where it, you know uh, made the land storm. Storm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Durian Bay, potentially. I remember so, Cow Barry got fucked up recently. Oh, yeah. About but that's, three, I don't know, three years ago or so. Yeah, that's true. Um, the wind gusts in the Perth storm, just to compare. Oh, to great, great. Hurricane yeah. Yarn. 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 Um, yeah. We're recorded at around 120 kilometers an hour. Now, if that's mm-hmm. the biggest storm half, in living memory, memory yeah. it, and when it's just a halfy, and millions of people are without power in um, the sort of Florida, you know, slash the states area. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's interesting to compare it because you got. Very, very interesting. Yeah. A bunch of infrastructure got smashed up, you know, universities, schools, all the rest. Extensive damage. But, but that's, that's kind of it. You know what I mean? Like we, Hurricane Ian's a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a big deal. It's a bear. It's a, it's a gusty bear, Ian, Ian is. Because mm. I saw a couple of photos. It blew me away. They were overhead satellite photos of like before and afters. Mm. And it was like some island. Um, I'm tempted to say like Palm Island or some shit, but, I mean, that's just because it's Florida. I think I've just got palm trees on my mind. But mm. they showed a couple of photos and I was like, man, that is actually like the, 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 they, they're, on, they're on the coast. And so it's got like beach in front of them, and like the houses have become beach. Yeah. Um, pretty wild. Interesting comparing it to the Perth storm, but I knew the Perth storm was, was going to be relatively tame because um, I mean I was even in I was on St George's Terrace during the Perth storm delivering some documents. Uh, it was my first year of the job, and um, I was in a white a white shirt, and I'm not someone that. Um, White, a white uh, like business shirt, and I'm not someone that takes an umbrella. And don't ask me how I was on St George's Terrace during the Perth storm without an umbrella. But I came back and I was doing my own, my very own uh, rowy Queen Elizabeth um, wet t-shirt competition. <laughs> yeah. Um, and but the fact that my point being the fact that I was in. The storm. I don't think it hit the CBD very hard compared to elsewhere. I was, like in, I was in one of the areas that did get hit hard at the time. Was your car? Well, we were all in the car? At the time. Yeah. Okay. You, was your car outside? Was it one yeah, of the yeah, areas? My that car got, got absolutely wrecked. Mm. Yeah. You got one of those holy cheese cars. Yeah. Just I was one of those statistics. Yeah. But I didn't really care too much about the exterior of the car. You know too much i reckon it looks um, cool like bash it up a bit i reckon yeah, you should, we should do one now cool, it was these cool like big hailstones smashed into everybody's cars lots of rain fell but there was hailstones so we were all inside at our workplace looking out the window um watching all the cars get smashed basically um and there was a friend of ours in the office who was really had you know his pride and joy was his car that's what he worked for you know what i mean an extension of himself yeah uh, he was livid and trying to figure out how he could park it somewhere else because it was just, it was it was pretty wild. It was pretty wild. I drove yeah. home that day, nearly through an ocean. Oh. Um, it was wild. Uh, everyone remembers where they were for the Port Perth storm. Yeah. yeah, I just had an idea. What about yeah, this gone. for the just a very quick sidetrack for the exterior of a car mm. um, golf ball material? Yeah. Yeah, because so it's like bumpy. Firstly, and- yeah, bumpy, but actual proper proper kind of golf ball. Like make it look like it's intentional um, because the golf ball is supposed to have great aerodynamic properties, isn't it? Yeah, but do you want the golf ball to be like bulbs on the outside of the vehicle or are they uh, dents caused by golf balls? No, I want proper – I want it made like that, fashioned like a golf ball. Okay. 
And I think it will really speak to the golf enthusiasts. <laughs> Are you selling this? Or are you just building this for yourself? What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you looking to do here? I think I'm going to go for some kind of collab between um, what's a t- what's a golf brand? You tell like, me. I can. I don't know. This is how much I spalding. Is that is that yeah, tennis? Is that no, tennis? No, that's, golf tennis. Right. that's tennis. No, what's well, okay. Um, Come on, we can do this. I was going to say, I was going to say, champion, and I'm like, that's some kind of like FUBU kind of sportswear type thing. <laughs> um, Nike, let's just, the, Nike, a collab. Okay, with Nike. With Nike. Okay, so they're, they're going to be the golf people and uh, Ferrari. Ferrari. And how how much would how much would people like that Ferrari Nike collab? I reckon it sounds like they're going to make a shoe car. No, it's going to be it's going to be red golf ball dimples. <laughs> Look, if Nike pull out for whatever reason, I think we can find uh, an actual golf brand who will link up with Ferrari. Oh, I've got to know. I can't believe I don't know a golf brand. Um, ah, let's go with Spalding. <laughs> yeah, they probably got golf balls. They've probably made golf balls. Okay, I've it's got not another Slassinger. one. I've got a new one. Yeah, go okay. On. So this we need to we need to broaden this to, to any kind of sports ball events. We could have a tennis ball covering of a car. So it looks like it's all feels and looks like a, a tennis ball. And who are you gonna do that with? Uh Spalding. Spalding. Get yeah, get them in. Like because you, there's money to be made there. Spalding and Ford. See how good wow. does that sound? That sounds that sounds pretty good. And then I'm sure they've done it. What about an AFL Tesla? Whew. So the 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 the, the well, leathery the kind of leather, skin. that leathery sort of feel to it, <laughs> and it's waterproof. I reckon it ticks all the boxes. Hey, the um the the Florida f- storm yeah. um, nearly but didn't do any damage to the the Artemis housing. They they put Artemis back in its big house to rest. Okay. Artemis the rocket that's going to send ultimately men to the moon. They put okay. that back yep. in its little Checked house it. to survive the, the the onslaught. And uh, they wrote the NASA did a tweet reporting minor damage uh, to the structure of the the housing, and the rocket is is all systems go. But they have to wait till mid November for a window to fly that bad boy again. What I thought it was late October. Uh, apparently, it's earliest fourth of November or something. Apparently, and hey, I've just put a picture in pictures on on the Discord. If you just want to have a quick look, yeah, I'd love to in pictures. Yeah, yeah. The, the top one, the bottom one, is not what you were thinking. And the bottom one is definitely not what I was thinking. The no. top one, yes. Now Lexus, you know, I said they've already done this. Wow, that you know, the f- sexy as fuck. So we got a tennis ball coated Lexus here for the US Open. So the US Open, this is this is where you went wrong with Slazinger. That is beautiful. The US Open has teamed up with Lexus yeah, to create yeah. your tennis ball car. This is one of those odd things where you've gone you've, it's a harebrained idea to make a tennis ball car. And the, the notion that because me. it's been vocalized, it's either been done in production or will be done. I didn't think it – yeah, you're right. I didn't think it was a bad <laughs> idea. I just thought that um, it would be a hard one to – you know when you, you all have to get in a room and you have to run it by the the like the brain's yeah, trust yeah, yeah, and you go yeah. like, <laughs> all right, guys, I want to make a tennis ball car. Everyone's like, what? yeah, that, look, that looks fucking good, man. I want to see a front-on – I don't. I want to see the whole thing. I want to know if it's real. Touch it. I want to know if it's real. Oh, I hope they just didn't do the back fender just for like the looks. Yeah, that like I want. I want. To, I want a functional car. I want. To, I want it to drive onto the court. Oh, and bounce. <laughs> you want it to bounce like a tennis ball. I don't want it to bounce. I want it to feel like a tennis ball. And I think it needs the white, the white <laughs> rimage on it. It needs that. <laughs> It needs that um, that that look, <laughs> that detail. That yeah, detail. So yeah. where just, they would have grooves in the car, put that white strip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. And there's probably a million different ball car combinations you can do. That's the that's the beauty of it. Um, with the hurricane, wait, it's a hurricane in the northern hemisphere, is it? Is a hurricane yeah, a cyclone? Yeah, yeah. 
No, with isn't the, it? Uh, yeah, so this high Okay, let's. I think hurricanes and cyclones are the same thing. It's a tornado that sound. forms on water, right? Wait, is a tornado a, a, a hurricane that forms on water? No, tornadoes are on land. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So yeah. hurricanes form on the ocean. Can you have. Can you have um, tornadoes in the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere? I think you can have tornadoes, yeah. But it doesn't? Okay. <laughs> because a hurricane is a counterclockwise or a clockwise. Yeah, because it's just the Coriolis effect, right, whatever. Is that, is that it, the Coriolis effect? Uh, uh, the, earth, the earth spinning means that, you know, it's like the toilet bowl. When, the, when you flush the toilet and it goes like one direction in the southern hemisphere and different direction right. in the northern hemisphere, same thing with the – with the hurricanes and the cyclones, right? Yeah, I never really understood the swirling toilet thing because Australian toilets don't really swirl. Not really. They're sort of designed a bit different, aren't they? They don't really swirl. Not like the – but baths. Baths do it. Your yeah, baths swirl. I, I I bathe. Yeah, okay. You've seen a couple of bath swirls. I bathe. I bathe with Luffingham. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Um, I wash him sometimes. He loves it. Um, what I find interesting about this hurricane, to I got a bit sidetracked, is how they used to always only name them women. Yeah, they alternate because no, they no, go no. they, they go they A, used, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. But they used right? to only ever be women. I'm pretty sure. And then really? they realized someone was like, yeah, until recently, very recently, in our lifetime, like like five years ago, I'm going to call. Ten years ago, maybe, and then someone was like, "Why? Why are, are lady we, storms? Yeah, why? Why, why are, are we only called? Why is every time there's a yeah, destructive yeah, yeah. fucking hurricane, we're always like fucking Margaret? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going into bat for the people who always put lady if their intent was indeed to be facetious, yeah, and misogynistic, but uh, I'm not going into bat for them. No, no, but it's fair that they call them men because men can be swirly. But what I was going to say birds, is um, gusty, gusty fellows as well. Oh, absolutely. But I think I, what I was going to say is that boats are ladies. Have you known, you know, things on the water? But they're not only ladies, are they? But they yeah. often are. Yeah, they often, yeah, they're no, they often are. A lady. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they name the boats after. Uh, it's a bit gay, isn't it? Well, bit, I, I, I don't bit, know. You know. I think it's are, more. I think it's more. They're they're riding the boat, so they're not going to ride a, a man boat. Yeah, they, yeah. They, I mean, they, they 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 shouldn't. I mean, they're not fucking the. They don't have to fuck it. They probably they probably like would like to. It's their yeah. Boat. I, I can see it would be. La- I can see how it happens. Right, the boat, the, the navy. Say you in the navy or something, and you're all getting on the boat. And you need to name the boat. Maybe there's like a competition or something. I don't yeah. know. But you don't – no one goes – like it's a pretty ballsy dude to be like, yeah, it's going to be the – Call it Jared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. You know, because you want to be ladsy with the guys and be like, yeah, it's uh, – Bertha. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm trying to think of just a female name, you know. But but, but what, where does this come from? Because I don't think that's a, that's a thing we do anymore, right? Because – you know, the, the you know in America they would have the the SS blah blah right yeah or the but in Australia it would be um, part of Her Majesty's it'd be uh, I can't remember what the I, I don't know what the naming HMAS name. HMAS you know Darwin or something yeah mm-hmm. would it. Yeah, I know, yeah, they seem to be places and things like that. I just Ladies. sold my um, second car on the weekend. I've been meaning to do it for ages. I bought the new car, needed to sell the old one, and it's been about eight months since I – I've had the new car for over a year now, and I've been meaning to sell this thing. Finally got around to doing it. Okay. Um, some Argentinian bloke came over with his mate. He's in the country. Um, cash sale. Like the car. Like the car, he, he did ran it through a bunch of tests. We were like, we yeah. had caps off things. We were like, revving it. We we're having a great time. He found some oil, had to try and I was like, man, it's just an oily number. There's no oil leak. Like, look at the driveway. Do you see any oil? You know, but he found, he seemed to like, apparently Subaru's run really oily. Um, but and never dry. Never dry. 
And he asked me um, when I handed him the keys, he's like, yeah, great, um, what's its name? Oh. And I was like, you know what? I don't even have a name for it. Wow, you didn't name it. I didn't name it. I don't know. I'm, but now I'm calling it the Rue. It's gone. It's gone. What does he name it? I don't know. I, t- I said like it's a Subaru and he because he's in Australia. Um, I was like the Roo. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know if he's going to stay with that one. But. Well, they'll have to teach it its new name. What, what, he, the new name he has for it? Yeah, if he, if he decides, I, I don't like that name, I'm calling it Martha Stewart or whatever. Um, then he has to teach it the new name, like you'd teach a dog its name, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, get used to it, get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I came across something interesting the other day. Um, it kind of relates to what we were just talking about, right? Because when you're in a storm, what do you have a lot of? Water. Water. I thought you were going to say wind, but no, I was thinking water. Um, what is crazy is um sorry just bear with me because i'm i had um an article that i wanted to reference because i need the stats need the stats okay and because yeah there's a lot of water right and i regard water as a relatively common thing because the earth the earth seems to be like what 70 percent water 80 depending on who you ask oh, well, well uh, yeah, by ground coverage right but you know in, there's obviously more more um laugh come on there's the, yeah there's more rock and stuff on the inside like if you're doing if you're breaking it down proportionally it's probably like you would say that because the water sits on top because it's it's less dense right the water goes down seven kilometers, but the Earth's radius or diameter is like you know thousands of kilometers. You so know that's a lie. Well, no, the coverage, like the the water, covers seventy percent of the surface, and like or you know, I, I'm just guessing the number. So and thirty percent of the planet land, Earth, the water doesn't go all the way to the center of the. No, but Earth. is it eighty percent of the Earth? Well, let's get to that, but. I don't, it's not, it's definitely not 80% of the earth. It's like um, a fraction, but that's not, we can deal with that. You're sidetracking me. You're sidetracking me <laughs> <laughs> because what I wanted to get at is I've heard someone say to me before that future wars will be fought over fresh water. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, don't know. Don't know about it, right? Yeah, because you just this, you go, we've got bundles of it. We've got bundles on it. We can like desal. We can desal. We can do all that what, stuff. What, yeah, but how long can you desal for? I don't know. Have, you know we're getting better at it. But <laughs> like you can desal as much as you as much as you want. But what was absolutely fascinating is these stats. Okay, so total global water. Yeah. Um, so 100 percent is total global water. Only 2.5% is fresh water. And I was like, I can, I can understand that. Um, you know, there's a lot of ocean and there's not as much. I probably wouldn't have put it as low as 2.5%, but I, I, I can understand that. Okay. So of that 2.5% that is fresh water, 80, 68.7% is locked up in glaciers and ice caps. Get them out. I've been saying it for years. We need to melt those bad boys as quickly as possible. Yeah, we've been putting we've been putting a slowdown on this global warming thing of late. Yeah, we need to focus on fresh water so there's no wars. There's a lot of there's a lot of headlines where they say a certain glacier slash big ice shelf has lost X amount of centimeters. Yeah, you know what I mean. But think about what we've gained: water. The most precious thing in the world. But just adding the oceans, it's not like we've, we didn't add it to our bourbon and Coke. Like if we could carve that up and like put it in pubs, then like everyone would be cheering. But it just falls into the ocean and just, you know, it's wasted. Yeah. So of, so of that hundred, oh, oh, so of that 2.5% freshwater, the breakdown is two-thirds of it is glaciers and ice caps. 
which it's one, which I'm happy for it to remain. Yeah, let's, can, we can we, let's let's leave let's that. Let's leave that. Let's leave them right, for a, for a rainy day, right? Then thirty yeah. percent, so about the other third, is groundwater, yeah. and mm. only one point two percent is surface slash other fresh water. Okay, got a bit so of groundwater. One point two percent of the two point five percent that is water, right? So it's becoming quite rare mm. now. Of that 1.2% of total fresh water, so only – so if you want fresh water on yeah. this planet, yeah. you, you have to either drink it, lick it off an iceberg, yeah. dig a well, yeah. or be lucky enough to have 1% of that. So when you're drinking your bottle of water, right, get super excited because you're like, man, this is fucking rare as shit. So of that 1% fresh water, which you drink and, and have a good time and you bathe and everything else in – yeah. 69% of that yeah. is ground ice and permafrost. What? I don't know. Perm- permafrost is the stuff that like that like uh you know, you see grass and I think permafrost is like um But the, what does that make up? 69% of the, so I'm just gonna recap. Total global water, 2.5% is fresh water. So let's take that 2.5% and break that down. What is that? Two-thirds of it is glaciers and ice caps. One-third is groundwater. One percent is surface water or other fresh water. So that, yep. And now if you take that 1.2%. One, 1. 1% 1 of 2%, yeah. So that, no, not 1% of 2%. It's like. Yeah, no, no. That 2% that becomes 100%. Becomes 100%. Yes, yes, that, yes. Yeah, 1% yeah, yeah. of that. Yeah. Of that, two-thirds of it is ground ice and permafrost. So you're not, got, you're not drinking that out of a bottle of water. Okay. 20%, 20, 20.9% 20. is lakes. And then you've got. 3.8% soil mo- moisture, 2.6% swamps, marshes, 0.49% rivers, 0.26% living things, and 3% atmosphere. So the lifeblood of our planet being rivers, and well, rivers is 0.5% of the 1% mm. of fresh water of, or of the 1% of surface water of the 2.5% fresh water. Yeah, it's, which would I'm obviously saying, be a fraction. Yes, yes, yes. Do you see where I'm starting to go with this? We need more rivers. Well, we, we we need to be celebrating fresh water. Accessible fresh water is a re- incredibly rare. What do you mean celebrating it though? By what? Like having a having a bath and yeah. Well, just thinking about it differently. I think maybe not wasting. It's 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 a it's actually a relatively rare thing. We think just because you know it's splashing on us in the storms and everything that. It's just gonna. It's just always around. But I think it, when you recognise how how rare it is, so 96 percent of all water is saline. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's in it's in the hosh. So I'm just getting this article. See if I've got any other stats for you. Yeah, so fresh surface water surf sources such as rivers and lakes only constitute twenty. To wait, where is that? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. So, fresh surface water sources such as rivers and lakes constitute 150th of 1% of total water. And that's what we rely on, other than digging for groundwater, which is, I guess, definitely an option. There's a lot of groundwater. Yeah, but yeah, but, uh, but if if you get all that, then you get you know you're always going to have this problem. We're 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 not just going to take a little bit as humans. We'll take the lot, and yeah, then that'll be gone. Not as, I just think, yeah, it's just not as the yeah, air we got. You know, more water locked up in glaciers and and groundwater, but it's just not accessible. Like. I can't go out and access that. I'm relying on swamps and rivers. Uh, swamps. Yeah, yeah, lakes yeah. And rivers. Yeah, yeah. Look, if you take anything from the pod, get out to your local river slash swamp and just get in it. I think you I know? want to do is change the conversation a little bit about water. The respect. Like I love a good – water is my favourite – okay, to put – water is my favourite beverage. Wow. Controversial. I love a water, and I laughed at Faker. Faker, the League of Legends goat, 
I read an article. Well, he said something about water. He's talking shit about water. No, no. Well, he he was an article called The Unkillable Dragon. Wait, what the the unkillable demon king or some something like that? It was back in his when he was like you know the goat. He still is the goat overall, but he's maybe not the best player in the world right now. Anyway, he had this article and he he was and they asked him some questions and stuff and it sounds like I was like man, this guy's never had a girlfriend in his life. Like he's clearly got some kind of like autism or something because he like you know is is so he just focuses on this one game and yeah. uh, and, and gets mm-hmm. really good at. It. And hats off to him. Hats off to him. he's, he's incredible. But they asked him what his favorite drink is, and he said water. And I was like, "Come on, this guy can is a robot. Like, he's a robot. What is wrong with him?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. But your favorite drink is water. Yeah, and now I'm coming around. I'm like, he's next level. He's. I reckon he just started like that weekend or something. Like, he was three days in, and then Dr Pepper the next day. He's done with it. <laughs> like, uh, look, who knows? But uh, I, I respect him for that now because I think. I, yeah, I just want to. I just want to get around water, and it, it's obviously it's essential for life. But we take it for granted. We think that it's just it's it's everywhere, slapping us in the face. I think next time it rains, I'm just gonna you know get my kid off and, and walk around well, it and um, really get around it. That's something that's a bit. Of, I don't know if it's an Australian thing or if it's an everywhere thing, but um, you know, good for the farmers. You ever heard that phrase? Good for the what? The water? Good for water. the farmers? Yeah. So when you're getting like shat on in a storm, you draw comfort in the fact that it's good for somebody. You know, hey, this it's not all bad news. Sometimes you get like those, after those really big storms, you have the farmers usually calling in to talk back radio and they'll go, yeah, we wanted some rain, but fuck, not that much. Like, that was, you know, it's destructive. You know, you don't want destructive storm activity. You just want some nice rain. Yeah, it's hard to get a happy balance, isn't it? You want to piss like without flooding. <laughs> yeah, dude. Actually, that's the other thing. Speaking of like you know glaciers melting and global warming and all that stuff, mm. I was I've got the BBC app on my phone, and I love that for a bit of a bit of a news source. And what struck me as a little bit unfortunate mm. is um, the. This was about a month ago or maybe two months. Um, Spain was suffering an, um, that the olive oil producers in Spain were, were, were like suffering because they've had the worst droughts in, in 500 years. Yeah. I mean, it's the worst drought since the Middle Ages. Getting clipped. Getting clipped, and that was not that started. I the first article I saw was about Spain's olive oil producers and how they're like, literally, olive oil is going to go through the roof because they just all their olives are all like you know fucked up, it's stunted and things like that. And then I was reading more more so about it was kind of extending. You know, obviously, Europe was affected generally by worst worst droughts in five hundred years. And then the next article is one third of Pakistan is underwater. Mm. with historic mm. flooding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A third. And the massive humanitarian crisis, massive issues yeah. there. And I, in yeah. my head I was like, man, Pakistan's not even that far from Spain. <laughs> like they you, just need to You're wondering how the, there can be this disparity between like – so do you think we should be trying to control the weather then? Do you think that should be is something we should be doing? Well, I know Dubai and China seed clouds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah it's it been, used, it's been used militaristically as well. Has it? How so? Yeah. Um, I believe it was in the Vietnam War um, as a way to uh, try and get a competitive edge uh, against the Viet Cong. The Americans cloud seeded to extend the monsoon season. Oh, so they were doing, they were doing it back then, were they? Apparently. that's yeah. uh, That could be wrong. I don't know. But yeah, I, no, no, I no. I don't even know where I heard that, but it would have been over ten years ago. Oh, look, just just own it. Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, confirmed. <laughs> um, so um, no, but, I, but but why would they do that? Would they do that to, like, you know, for example, Queen's funeral? They don't want it to rain on the day, right? They'd, they'd prefer if it didn't rain. They would prefer, yes. Um. So, is there a way you could be like, look, we'll We'll pop a few clouds in on the Monday before 
get it all happening and then should be all good. You know what you do? What do you do? You pop an umbrella. You pop an umbrella. So so you're not you're not down with it then? Just pop an umbrella. Like I don't what know. Would we be seeding clouds, like removing clouds? I don't think it's that inconvenient, is it? Like you, this is this rare. Now, yeah, I'm just been going on about how much I love water, and now we're like, trying to remove it. Not not trying to remove it. I was more thinking about trying to avoid situations of flooding, like extreme mm-hmm. flooding, and then these other drought things, right? So what you need is some sort of like uh, global weather thing going. Oh, they need you know you know you need some rain over there. You know, I'm just imagining God hands around the planet, really. Um, well, what chucking, I think, okay, I think, I think dealing with the clouds and the, the gusty winds and all that is yes. maybe a little bit beyond us because we can't, these gusty fellows are too much. But what I do think. What, what are you talking about? It's just physics and stuff, right? Couldn't we just pop a fan up that's doing 220 kilometers the other way? Or would that just make it worse? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, because it's all like heat and all this stuff. What I think is far easier and more practical is I think we need more of a, like we have networks of pipes already um, is we just need to uh, be a, bit, a little bit more elaborate with it and we just need like for example for example a pipe between Pakistan and Spain right you, you're trying to solve the immediate problem but not just that so we want interconnectivity we want pipes everywhere oh uh, yeah <laughs> so we can so- we can take ch- take the water <laughs> from the place that has too much and move it to the place that needs it oh man. But we I do we do this again. anyway. We do this anyway. How's the CYO kind of pipeline? Kalgoorlie to Perth, or Perth to Kalgoorlie? Do you yeah, know that one? The water yeah, pipeline. Yeah, yeah, it's a famous one. Super famous. Feeds all the 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 towns along the way. Yeah, we're good at pipes. We're good at pipes. See that? That's one pipe. That's a bloody big pipe. We do got the, we got the Nord the Nord Stream too. That's a pipe oh, that's uh, yeah, it's uh, causing some issues at the moment. Yeah, what are they going to do about that? What do they? What do they do? Do they? Man, how that's do you, dodgy. How do you, that is how there do you is some. Have you heard that? that it's it's likely they it's a, it's basically commonly agreed they think it's sabotage. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty that's pretty easy, right? Okay, but is that allowed? No, 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 no. But it's who's, not allowed. Who's sabotaging it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is the question. Yeah, like who you like because. The, I don't know if who exactly the the non right basically it's Russia and versus the rest of the world right the rest of the world mm-hmm. said if you fuck with any infrastructure we will neck you they said that to Russia right and now there's this pipeline issue right that's critical infrastructure yeah. that is why. So, but the, there has been no retaliation, which makes me think it's not Russia. Because if they could pin it on Russia, they'd be like, yo, Russia, we told you, we warned you, you fuck with the infrastructure, you, you're getting it. Yeah, right. See what I'm saying? I, I think it's likely not Russia. But anyway, I diverge. You know the CY O'Connor pipeline? Mr. O'Connor. Yeah, of course. I don't know what, what CY stands for. Tragic. But, tragic Mm. yeah so my understanding is that i don't know what year it was uh mr o'connor was in charge of the pipeline 700 kilometers to take water from from perth to to kalgoorlie that little dry massive task huge massive task they build it all they get it all up and i think this was a bit of a (sighs) bit of an infrastructure project back then what what do you what year do you reckon it is if you're going to guess um i don't know i don't know what, 1910? I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I would have said, I'm going to say 1950, but um, th- what they did is normally when they make pipes now, they make a bit and then they, they fill that section and they make another bit, they fill the section. And so when they go to turn it on, it's all full of water. With this one, because I think of the early days of pipes, they turned the tap on at one end and then they waited they thought it would take a day for water to start coming out the Kalgoorlie end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After a week, no water had come out. No. And Mr. O'Connor was pretty pretty embarrassed, to say Devastated. the least. Devastated, yeah. Went on South Frio Beach and popped a cap in his ass, yeah. his own ass. Really, 
It's really sad. Yeah, it is really sad. It's brutal, man. And then the water started coming. And then the water started coming. Oh. By the way, he died in 1902. Oh, okay. Wow. So it was a while ago. Man, he was he was the he was the pipe pioneer. Yeah. Yeah, no, but pioneering longer pipe. than you think, man. Like um, we're building pretty big tunnels these days. Like, we're pretty good at tunneling. But we've always been good at tunneling, man. Have we? Depends yeah. on what what you what you're tunneling through. Yeah, you don't pick the hardest rock if you're just tunneling, you know, with uh, tools and stuff. Yeah, but sometimes you need a tunnel, right? And you don't, you, you, you know, the rock's just the rock. You're like, yeah, we need a tunnel here. You know, we, you don't get to choose what you're tunneling through all the time. True. Um, but the only reason I say that is I think of one famous tunnel that leads through to Milford Sound in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Apparently it's granite they had to get through. And it's about, yeah. uh, it's, it's like maybe two kilometres long or something like that. And Amazing. for every foot, there's some crazy stat, like for every foot, or inch or something they used like you know a thousand tons of explosive it was some crazy thing and it was it took years and years i'll get i'll get the stats i'll get the stats but um it, whilst whilst i'm getting the stats i've got um uh, just a, a little thought experiment for you if you will yeah go on uh you're on the the 30th floor of a 50 story building. Yep. Um you you pop a deuce in the loo. Okay. And you flush it. Okay. Just 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 think about you're the poo now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah, think, yeah, just yeah. think about that for a little bit. Just I've got think, a journey. think about that. I'm going, yeah. on, I'm going on a journey. That's it. Yeah, okay. That, that's that's the thought experiment. No, it's a good thought experiment. Does that does that start to like pique your interest a little bit? It does in a way because you're one of those guys who um, believes that when you consume water, you are, the water becomes you, right? A little bit, yeah, yeah, pretty much. What about your deuce, right? Now that you've released it, right? It's ready to go on its journey. Mm-hmm. Is that you? It is. It is you. It is. I have a very liberal view of what me is. Yeah, yeah, because you believe that you're kind of everything at some in some respect, right? Me is virtually anything I can influence. Mm. Virtually anything. My environment is 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 in a way me. I don't. I don't think. The, I think the it's very it's very artificial to say that the boundary of your skin, in my view, it's very artificial to say the boundary of your body is the end of you because that doesn't actually. That doesn't. That's just like a very convenient way of thinking. What is and isn't you. Yeah, I know what you're saying. But I think we're we're a bit more integrated than that to to our surroundings. I know what you mean. Yeah. So about the poo thing, and sorry, yeah. that's a bit bit too graphic um, <laughs> for you, but. This, this 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 is an incredible. This is a little bit the, the piping, right? Where we're connecting Pakistan to to Spain, right? This is sort of where I'm going with that. The, with, it's so elaborate, it's so intricate. Like, where does your poo go? How, what kind of a journey? What distance are we talking? Is it where, like, kilometers? Kilometers? Yeah, kilometers. Come we're all shitting. I'm in this building. It's fifty stories big. Everyone's shitting all day long. <laughs> And this, it's just like this, and one building, and we're in a small city. There's all these. It's just, no, it's no, like no. A funneling. It's funneling okay, out. Like, okay. It's like it's like a body with all the veins and all the water, all the blood, and, and the excrement is just like flowing. I don't know how we process it all. Because when you construct a building, and you'd know this if you've ever played like a Sim City game or <sighs> anything like that, you need to give it a few things. You need to give it water. It needs water. People like to drink water. We love water. It's so it rare. It needs power, electricity it does to power the lights to get the computers on. And it needs sewage connected. Now, imagine what, in your what, what head. Those, right? All those three things? You got the, like, the, the plumbing, water, the electricity, water. Oh, and water. I thought plumbing and electricity. Okay, sewage and water. Water, I those out, powering, yeah. power, yep. powering. I just said powering. 
water, warding, powing, and suing, right? Now, imagine at the bottom of this imaginary building, there's a very large pipe. A big one, okay. And it goes into, below it, another very large pipe. And that pipe goes around the city. In a loop. That big one. That big, big one. Big one, okay. Okay. Now all you have to do, right, is connect all of the ones in your 50-story building to that one big one. You, you are treating it like SimCity. Why wouldn't you? This is this is... This is this is. The, I'm just breaking down the project. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. This is how I do it. Yes, like that. But you're simply just connecting. You're just like, yeah, that pipe needs to be connected to another pipe. Yeah, p- connecting pipes. We're doing pipes. Connecting pipes. We are connecting pipes. But there's also like, in reality, there's uh, some more complexity to that. Not right. really. They have to build rooms with the the, con- the with the idea in mind that pipes may be required. Or it needs to be accessible. But if there's also like gravity, yeah, playing yeah, a part. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, there's like when I look at the the bowels of the building and you see all the piping and stuff. You know when you see all the the nasty shit down in the basement and you yeah. see all the pipes and all the cables and stuff. You start realizing it's not as pretty as just like you know one force it like it's it's, a, it's just a lot going on like the plumbing it, it blows my mind the more if you actually yeah, think about what yeah. happens with the journey oh. that the poos take um and the the there's just the sheer volume of it <laughs> it starts it just blows me away like it just really starts to freak me out i'm like man this and it works it works fucking well as well you know how often do you have a blockage well yeah true it's just so it's so efficient. It's amazing. I really think plumbing is the craziest thing humans do. I reckon if there were aliens that had a look at us, they'd be like, "Man, they got that plumbing shit sorted." Mm, maybe, maybe it could be better. Oh, I don't know if it could. I don't know if it could. Probably will be better. You know, you know how we play the in the in our lifetime game where we yeah. talk about whether or not things will occur in our lifetime. And I started trying to think about that from my parents' perspective. They were born in 1960, right? So they would have been playing the game in their 20s or 30s, right? So we're talking 1985, 1989 predictions for the future, ones that have come to pass already. Right, right. What could they have possibly predicted? I'm going to have to ask them about it basically. Wow. I have a book that I'll review and get back to you next week. It's called History's Great Predictions. Hmm. But – I think it covers things that happened and things that didn't happen. So it's predictions that may have been completely wrong. I remember one of them in there is there was some famous dude that like some famous physicist of some kind that was big at the time. And he said we would have nuclear vacuum cleaners like within a certain amount of time. Wow. Nuclear powered vacuum cleaners. Now that is a Dyson I want to get my hands on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what you want to do is when you're finished with that is remove the plutonium very <laughs> carefully. <laughs> Imagine the suction. And if it's a nuclear vacuum, right, that, I think you that have just means it would last forever. It would last forever. Yeah, you, you don't change it, right? Yeah, you'd never change it. You'd never plug it into a wall socket. What you need you know, is the battery. You never need to plug it in. No, no. I think you have one nuclear battery uh, or power source should i say power source and you you move you plug that into your different appliances so you need the drill you, you put it in the hands-free drill the cordless drill should i say the hands-free drill that would be weird cordless drill and you 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 bang in your your screw or whatever you bang a hole in the wall and then you um let's say now you want to use the lawnmower it's, it's like a ryobi you know the ryobi has the the, the battery thing the 18 mm. volt but mm. nuclear is what yeah. I'm saying. No, but why are we? Why are we? Why are we with? Why are we messing around with garden equipment? You know, we live in Australia. We got some pretty good uranium here. Okay, we do. Yeah, we make a car brand called the Nuke Car. It's a nuclear powered car. Oh baby, uh, you don't need to. You don't need to plug it into the wall. No, 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 no. You don't need solar power. 
solar, solar panels. No. This car will go for a minimum, guaranteed, 700 years. <laughs> is, that the, is that the sound that Tim the Toolman Taylor makes when that he gets was, really yeah, excited? That was good. Yeah, there, yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah. trying. I couldn't remember what it was exactly. He just gets really excited about it. It just reminded me. I was like, well, he would love a nuclear, a nuclear power source. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That, well, that, well, you know what we do? We call it the Australian muscle car. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh boy. And it's got a big um, – it's, um, it's a tennis ball. It's, it's made of tennis ball material. Yeah, yeah. Because we partnered with Salasinger. Oh, we'll, we'll partner with the Australian Open. Okay. And uh, I can rebuy. <laughs> I still can't think of these brands. I don't know. They, they, do, they spend all this money on advertising. This is hilarious. Mm-hmm. You, you don't like, know the name. And I, I'm like, you know, it, you know, I just still can't figure it out. No, no, no. What's the Jaguar one? The one that's like a – there's, there's Puma. There's, a there's oh. Puma. Oh, Oh, yeah, it's the Jaguar one, isn't it? There's a Slasinger, right? There's another one that starts with an S. But, um, no, it'd be great to be a fly on the wall in those Lexus tennis ball meetings because you were trying to think of a motto for a beer brand recently. I don't know if this was uh, in real life on the podcast or I'm making it all up, but you were trying to think about the Bud – I think it's the Bud Light motto. Or yeah, whatever they yeah, used to yeah. call it, whatever they used to call it, the one that used to get played in fights, and I remembered it the other day. Did you? And do you know it now? I'm just trying I to do. figure it out. Yeah, Bud it? Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. That's it. That's it. And that's the <laughs> saying. They've the covered perfect. all. They've covered. They've covered all the bases. That's what you want to do. Well, that's what the VB ad did. Except they sort of expanded from a hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer to you can get it doing nothing yeah, at all. This, this is more explicit because it, it, it's just a one all-encompassing. It's like monothe- yeah. it's a monotheistic beer motto. It says yeah. the perfect beer for whatever happens. It's monotheistic. What happened? Doesn't matter. Beer. VB was, had a more of a, a pagan approach to the beer. It says you can get it driving. You can get it thriving. You can get it sanding the wheelbarrow. Matter of fact, I got it now. He has it now, it. but they're hoping that the viewer of the ad also has it. Exactly, time, exactly. Yeah. But they were they were yeah polytheistic in that they they specifically had a a a a, a beer for every occasion. They said we have a beer. We you can get it doing all these things, right? Yeah. But a matter of fact, I got it now. You can get it doing yeah, nothing. All that's it. it. Yeah, they skipped but, it. They skipped it's too, all those it's too steps. Confusing. It's too confusing for the consumer. Yeah, well, can I get it doing this? Can I get it doing that? You don't know. But if you say you can get it doing nothing at all or it's the perfect beer for whatever happens. See, but even the perfect beer when you for nothing at all, it's still when you're doing nothing at all. It's still specific to that moment. But, yeah, like you say, no, covering the, the ground with the monotheistic broke saying the it's the perfect beer for whatever happens, you can't. It's always perfect. It's perfect. Whatever <laughs> happens. Yeah, but there something has to happen for it to be perfect. You know, oh, so we need to go even broader. So, the perfect beer for whatever may or may not happen <laughs> That's in it. the past That's or in it. the future or right That's now. It. The perfect beer for whatever occasion or not occasion. <laughs> 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 there was a very famous brand when I was a kid um, that was famous in my family because we would laugh at their motto. Because I don't think they quite understood the point of why you use this in a phrase. But they their one was, we put the F in fresh. Who's, whose was this motto? It's was this? Orange Juice Company. I can't remember which company it was. But they their motto was, we put the F in fresh. Now, I don't get it. That doesn't make any sense. You meant to say, like, we put the, the you know, um, I don't know, I, one of those – things you got to say it's got to be you know if f was a thing that people would associate with freshness <laughs> then maybe yeah then, yeah we put the f in fresh fresh so without them it's it's just fresh um did you know um that v thinking of vb have you ever seen they i think they engaged the the like Australian Symphony Orchestra to do a VB ad. 
I think I saw this, yeah. I would have seen it in my VB travels of the internet. You probably yeah. would have, yeah, but we didn't talk about it. They gave, like, for what I love about it is they got all, they got the orchestra, right? So you've all had your different, you've all got an instrument that you're an ex, you're a celloist, you're mm-hmm. a violinist, you're a triangle, whatever the different things you do are. You've got all these cool, you got these skills, right? They gave them all a beer bottle filled with a certain amount of beer. Mm. And now they're just now they're all triangle players. Yeah, but are they the symphony orchestra playing bottles? It is. It is. They got playing professional bottles? playing bottles. All they got. Prof- they had. A, they had a dude with a the dude that waves his fingers. Um, the maestro. Uh, yeah. What's his what, what it's called? Conductor. The conductor, and he was he was the dude doing. And and they did the VB song. And there was like even there was like an xylophone. The only one that made sense was the xylophoner. Who, yeah. Exactly. He, he had a whole range strong. of bottles. He was like. Like he was doing the little, he was doing his little drum roll thing on the bottles. Yeah. Okay. And it was an ad that went out, like a proper thing. So yeah, they yeah, really, yeah. yeah. Would have cost a lot of money. That, that that's another good marketing meeting to be able to sit in on. Yeah, that would be a good one. They really tried to up it. They went from like they targeted drink driving to, at one point, and then they engaged the Australian Symphony Orchestra and gave them all a beer. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, one more piece of news because I'm having a love affair with water. Yeah. Why, what's going on with you and water, man? I mean, your I've favorite had, drink. I've always had a good time um, with it. But <laughs> it's, um, have you heard of, uh, it's just an article I came across this week about um, Saturn's moon Enceladus. Have you heard, do you, have you heard of Enceladus before? No, no, no. One of Saturn's moons. Yes. Is there water there? Yes, it is an ice. It's an ice moon. What does that mean? It's it's predominantly ice. It's predominantly ice. They they think there is a rock core in there at some point, but not much. And it's nearly all. It's nearly all. Um, they think it's, and they've realised mm. out that it's. I see geo- what you're thinking. It is the brightest. It is the brightest object, non-starry object in the solar system. Ah, oh, all the ice. We, and, but not just that, it's tectonically active. So the same way our our Earth is tectonically active in creating new land, it creates new ice. How? By like a volcano of liquid. Sounds great. Right. I think we should send the dart at it, you know, the, the, the send the dart to hit it, clip it, Clip it. Bring it down to us. We need the water. Bro, this is going to absolutely freak you out. There's, <laughs> there's a mission planned to slam a, a, a probe into it, but they need to get, because they're looking for life, right? And this is, this is one of the most likely candidates for life in our solar system yeah, because right. you've got a liquid center. You've got a gooey liquids caramel center, but it's surrounded by ice, So that, and it's about eight kilometers thick. So they're sending a nuclear probe. They're actually they're actually going to do this. I don't know when. That is going to uh, melt slash drill through the surface, and then it's going to navigate autom- autonomously, look and testing, looking for life inside the ocean planet of the. It's like the sixth the one. Of the, it's like the sixth moon of Saturn. I hate doing this to you, man. I hate doing this to you. It's not true. In our lifetime. No, it's not true. In our lifetime. No, it's not true. Um, what are you dealing with there? Every time you say nuclear probe, they're not, they're not, it's not a probe. They promised me nuclear vacuum cleaners in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> this nuclear probe thing is um, probably to deal with some sort of Stargate level alien threat <laughs> hanging around Saturn. Maybe some sort of like, you know. Wraith or 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 Gould level threat pyramid ship. So we're going Probably. to deposit a nuke in inside mm-hmm. the, the the moon. It's always the play, and then we wait the for them to check out the moon. But and it's actually a bomb. What do you mean check out the moon? Don't they live there? Well, I thought maybe you were, it was a trap. Oh, so they go to check it out and you blow them up. So it's like a kind of a, a it's a booby trap inside the moon. 
it's good though. We're sending out lots of nukes into space. Let's let's yeah, we, we need more nukes in space. Let's um <laughs> circle back to Enceladus like more broadly. But this article was about um because see the Cassini spacecraft that went and checked out Saturn back in the nineties uh did a flyby on this and they were like and they were wondering why it's so bright because the newly formed ice hasn't been ploughed into by um, has been ploughed into less by comets and things. Because when you have a comet impact a a planet, it is it's making it more like a golf ball, and it's less reflective because the um, it's all dimpled and like shitty now. It's all like it's not it's not new and shiny. This one because it keeps constantly creating fresh ice. It 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 removes it's it, it's it's it, you got to see a photo of it because it's actually the most unique. Uh, Celestial body. body in the yeah. solar system. You, you look at it in one second, you're like, man, that is different. Like something's going on there. Like you look at the moon, it's got all these, you know, ugly pock marks on it. So it's just an ugly bitch, right? And then you look at Enceladus and it's this sexy, sleek, like, you know, it's got makeup on. Oh, I see it. Yeah. It's pretty. And there's these really famous claw marks um, on the South Pole. Mm. And this is what happened is that when the Cassini spacecraft did its flyby, it, it detected that the the tiger claws, I think they call them, it looks like four rips through the surface, like a big gullies, big, uh, mm. big uh, they realised that when it uses its sensors and detected that they are hotter than the rest of it, and that's actually the South Pole, but for some reason the South Pole is hotter. It's geologically active because of the, um, they think it's as it's orbiting Saturn with all its other moons, it's getting squished in and out. And that squishing in and out is creating heat in the inside and that's creating an ocean, gooey centre, but the outside is um, is still hard. But um, then then they, were, they, they couldn't figure out why it looked so sexy. And then it took a photo of it when the sun was going behind it and they realised that there's massive geysers of water and there's volcanic plumes of liquid spewing mm. out the, the the south pole into space and that's i amazing. think that that's one of the things that creates saturn's rings one of the things that contributes to it interesting um but enceladus is a, f- a fascinating thing i can't wait for them to send a nuclear probe into it microbial extraterrestrial life and this is what the article was right so the article that's the base that's the background knowledge the article says it's basically a dude saying um, that they think there's phosphorus, which is an important element for life. Um, it's a vital component to life's biochemistry um, because it's in DNA and, <coughs> excuse me, it's used in cell membranes and bones and all this other stuff. Um, even our energy producing molecule, um, a- ATP, adenosine triphosphate, I think it is, obviously has phosphate in it. So, Life as we know it is critical to have phosphorus. And this study that this guy's done, um, for some reason they thought that there was no phosphorus there. But there's this Chinese bloke who's come out and suggested that um, that we've got it all wrong. So it says a new study led by Jin Hao Hao. He's a senior research scientist at some place in China, contradicts the earlier findings claiming that the 2018 research used outdated geochemical models of Enceladus's rocky ocean floor. And he says we can be more confident than before that the oceans of Enceladus are habitable. And when the Cassini spacecraft flew over it and through, well, I don't know if it was the Cassini or another one, flew through the plume of liquid, it detected heaps of markers for, for organic life um, for the, the the basic components, not nothing like nothing complex, but it has methane, ammonia, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen sulfide, all the critical things. But it didn't detect phosphorus. And so, so now, the, is the, so is the phosphorus discovery more recent? Uh, it well, it is, but he's challenging it for some reason. He says although they didn't detect it in the plume, um. 
he is for some reason saying that they've got it wrong and his his modeling has it but i don't know why it wouldn't maybe it's only deep in the ocean i don't know interesting because apparently it says here on earth phosphorus is made available through weathering of dry land which enceladus lacks so they concluded that phosphorus would be scarce in enceladus's ocean because the rocks on the seabed would slowly dissolve in the ocean. Whereas he says, no, the way the rocks would erode um, would create phosphorus, basically, he thinks. But anyway. That let's, fast- let's, let's point something at it, right? Let's hit it, you know. Actually, just dart it. Just dart it back to us. We'll check it out when it's in our, in, when it's in our atmosphere. I had a look at a, a comparison of it uh, against Earth, and we can take it. Yeah, I think it's a bit little. It's it's little. It's it's probably what a, a, I don't know a tenth of the size of the of our moon. Yeah, I'd say something like that. Something like, our moon's pretty damn bloody big, but um, yeah, I'd say something like that. Anyway, that just fascinated me because Enceladus is a is an exciting place anyway. And then mm-hmm. when they when they sit, he sort of I thought that maybe it was just clickbait, but this guy um, clickbait in the sense that. Um, it makes it more likely that there's that there's life. Like, yeah. But anyway. But yeah. water, right? Fucking water. What can't it do? What everywhere. can't it do? Yeah. It's everywhere. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, maybe maybe there, but um a lot of it's locked up in the in the the Don't we know it. Yeah. Don't we it. know it. Yes, I promise I won't say water again. What was your previous favourite drink? Um, For water, I can say water. Oh, I didn't mind a, I didn't mind a Bundaberg. What, what I liked a mean? Bundaberg ginger beer. Yeah, okay, that was your favourite drink. Oh, not not a Bundaberg rum, definitely not a Bundaberg rum. Jeez, <laughs> geez, have to be careful. That was your favourite drink before water. Now it's. Oh, water. I was just trying to think of what I don't know. I don't know if I had had one. But if I had to, if you put me on the spot like that, I liked a Bundaberg rum. They actually had a peach, a Bundaberg peach. Okay. I so think if I had a Dr Pepper and I had a Bundaberg ginger beer, is that what you want? Ginger beer? Yeah. Okay. You want that one? Uh, yeah, because last time I had Dr Pepper, I read the ingredients and I was absolutely shocked. In a good way. Uh, no, in in an, in a bad way. In a bad way. I'm going to get them wow. out for you and I'm going to get them out for you because this will shock you. No, it won't. No, it's, but- it's, um, it's doctor. It's, it's, it's medical. Okay, here we go. It's, me- it's, it's medical. Oh, uh, it's- <laughs> a, do- a doctor has said, a doctor, Mr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper. Oh, actually, it's Mr. <laughs> We should bring up one called Mr. Pepper. Um, it was a Dr. <laughs> Pepper Cherry, I think. Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a Dr. Pepper Cherry. Can- yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but okay. that's Dr. Pepper Cherry, which, you know, I'd, I'd have one of those too. Actually, that it was fucking good. It was really good. Um, it would be. But, but. If the but, can on but, the back said it's totally fine for you as well, you'd be you'd be thinking, what am I doing with all this water shit? Why can't we discover some Dr. Peppy with cherry planets? My, my problem you is know? it has three types of acid in it. Yeah, that's okay, isn't it? No. Well, I don't think so. It doesn't sound that. good. It just doesn't sound good. Some it's, of them are okay. You're allowed to have got, some of them. We've talked about this before. When I got pulled over when I was drink driving, but I wasn't over the limit, and the cop said it, he gave me a street drinking fine because it's a bad look. Right? Bad, look. bad look. What's okay. a bad look is looking at the back of the can and seeing okay. this. Okay, Go sodium on. benzoate. That sounds citric okay. acid. Whoa, sodium benzoate. Yeah, I'll have some sodium of that. benzoate sounds very chemically. Yeah, we'll have some of that. Citric acid. Yeah, citric acid. You get that in a fruit. Yeah. Yeah, citric helps it a little bit, but still, I don't think you're supposed to just have the the acid on its if own. If you eat an apple. You're going to get citric acid. You're yeah, also going to get fiber and nutrients and like uh, all the other on. things. We, might, we might be getting some fiber coming up. You phosphoric don't know. acid. That's you need that to live, don't you? Yeah, well, phos- phosphorus is important, I guess. But no, yeah, but it's the we'll acid part the again. Acid. It's the acid. You're focusing yeah, on we'll the acid. Of that. We'll have some of that. Caffeine. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. 
No, no, I don't really have huge problems caffeine. Malic acid. Okay. <laughs> Nothing good about malic. I saw a reconnect. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay, um, okay um, we got some, sodium, uh, we got sodium, sodium phosphate. Food. Okay, need that. Yeah, the phosphate thing. And then uh, what about this one? Red 40. Oh, no. What the hell is that? Yeah, you don't want a number like red 40. It's like it's WD40. It's a good number, 40. though. It's a good number. Yeah, but um, I, I want I want my forties on my on my um no on I my don't WDs. want the, I don't want red too. I I'm happy to have. I red don't want forties in my no, Dr want, Pepper. Red, that that, that is that is you know what they probably call it Dr Pepper to try to like because it's poison. They're trying mm. to like mitigate some of the the negative the negative yeah. things where they're like oh let's let's sell these people you know this a poison. It's a doctor's we'll, product. It's 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 Dr Pepper. Hey, Dr Pepper. Yeah, but you know how people who don't like Dr Pepper they go, that tastes like cough syrup. And people who like Dr Pepper go, yeah, it's awesome. It's actually a genius name. Um, yeah, oh, it's Dr Pepper. Look, it's Dr Pepper Cherry. It was actually pretty good, but it's just it freaks me out that it is very. Yeah, but if you've read the back of your your Bundaberg ginger beer, what do you think is going to be in that? You know, there's going to be some acids, you know, yeah. maybe yeah. some I phosphoric I ones. I've man. changed, I've changed. Um, yeah, yeah, but like there might be some phosphoric ones in there as well, man. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I'll go to the Bundaberg page. I'm guaranteeing some citric acid in the mix. Okay, peach juice from concentrate. That sounds good. Peach brew. Uh, peach brew. Okay, it's got citric acid. Oh, no. Damn, it's back. Preservatives, preservatives 211. Oh, no, not that. See, that's too also, many. It's also got 202. Oh. Yeah, it's not so bad, right? That's good. We don't mind 202. Oh, no. And then it's got some colors, Stabilizer 415. Oh, no, that's a big one, Stabilizer 415. <laughs> and then this is interesting, antioxidant, and then in, which, is, which is a good thing. Okay, we'll have some of that. But then in brackets it says ascorbic acid. Why does it have to put that in brackets? Mm, just, Why don't you just come out and say it? Yeah, come out and say it. Yeah, it should come just, out and say it. Don't you know, bracket it. If it's such a good thing, don't. Yeah. Don't. What did they say it was first? What, what was the first word? Antioxidant, which is a great oh. thing. That's like a, <laughs> you, you want antioxidant in the form of ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid. I think we yeah. learned something. No, no, we definitely did. We're getting there. I think it's all, it's all, like incremental improvement, right? No, but I, I think we learned something about acids. There's good acids and there's bad acids. Apparently, I have three quick fire articles that I need to get through. Quick yeah. fire. I'm not going to fuck okay. around with them. Okay, it's going to be like a three minute take on each one of these ones. First you one. Didn't, you didn't pull these from the community newspaper, did you? No, no. I, I, I've got some of those, but I'm not. <laughs> there's no time. There's no time. Okay, I'm talking. I'm talking robot dogs on the moon now. Whoa! When is that happening? Okay, soon, soon. Moon's best friend. Colon. Robot dogs could be the future lunar explorers. Why? Why are they dogs? Let me tell you. Um, the, the, like, you know, we've got probes and stuff. The probes are going to go. What the fuck are all these things? And they go, oh, they're robot dogs. They're here to explore the moon. What am I fucking? They're, 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 they're agile. That's one thing. That's the one thing about the Sterling Range Wood Pork. I would say is you need to be agile. If you're if you're 55 and your knees are a bit cooked, do not do not do. You need to be a robot dog up there. This robot okay, dog concept. Okay, robot dogs. All right. No robot dogs soon. I think they're going up. They might go. I think they might be going with. I don't want to say it. They might be going with Artemis. I don't know. Okay, it's called Leap. Legged Exploration of the Aricastix Plateau, which is one of the moon's regions that uh, uh, the European Space Agency are excited about. So late 2020s, they're saying? Late 2020s, that's soon. That's pretty soon. Dog Shape is based on a legged robot called Animal, A-N-Y-M-A-L. So not spot by Boston Dynamics, not spot. No, that's that. I that crossed my mind. They don't. They don't mention any of that stuff. So this guy, a lot of people this, making robots, I guess. A lot of people making robots, including the European Space Agency. It seems 
Um, between Annie Mao's varied gates, ability to backflip up if it falls and its agility <laughs> at climbing steep slopes, because that's apparently a big problem. The Mars rover <laughs> has had to back out of some sandy sections because they're worried about losing it. Yeah. But the animal can dig channels um, for, 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 you know, for, for soil sampling and stuff. So it digs like a dog. Yeah, dude, it does high fives as well. It and flips it over, rolls over, and yeah, it loves belly scratches. Now, the 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 dog, right? Because the way you were describing it before, it was like it's capable of backflips to get back up. And you're like, you're like the rover is go, it pulls up, and it's oh, I can't do this; it's too sandy or whatever. And the dog just does a backflip just to just to rub it in. I mean. It needs to be able to be agile, and I guess a backflip is a pretty early thing that they would develop for this robot. But also, dog. they can flip boulders and things like that. It's it's apparently quite a a useful um, setup for like a robot to be able to, yeah, to but, be able to do what it needs to do. Yeah, but okay, you I would agree with, with this. Yeah, a human could do a pretty good job of most of those tasks. Yeah, but no, right? no fucking humans. Like you know, it's it, 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 it's a it's a no, no. So why are we why are we making human. why are we making robot dogs? Because we, we don't want to make kill robot humans. Yeah, but insurance purposes, like if you fuck up a no, mission, no, no. robot humans, oh, oh, humanoid oh. robots. No, I, they're not as stable. I don't think. I don't think we make them as well. This thing's a four-legged creature, so it can it can yeah, you know, like it. do its thing. I um, like it. This is one thing that the article says. I have to move on to the next one in case we run out of time. But robot dogs on the moon. I knew you'd like that. Okay, it, yeah, late twenty twenty. Let's late go. Twenty twenty. Yeah, let's let's put a put that in the calendar. Remember, we have that calendar that yeah. we put all the things. Yeah, in. it's it. Um, pop that in. Uh, it said they, the last thing it says, yeah, it's about fifty kilos. But um, researchers were surprised just how smart the robot has been in the early tests. Why are they surprised by that? Well, it's uh, it what because you know how the robots just figure you know they have to figure things out how to be most efficient and stuff in the <laughs> lower gravity um, on the moon, which is one sixth of that on Earth. The um, I don't know how they know this because I don't know how they make artificial gravity because it's in quotes, this is a quote, the animal started using a jumping-like motion of locomotion just as the Apollo astronauts did, realizing that jumping can be more energy efficient than walking. Amazing. Pretty cool that it started doing that. It just figured it out. Just goes like, oh, this is better. So it's like, a oh. machine that's constantly analyzing, is this the most efficient way I should be? I can do this task and then adjusting. On the yeah, fly. and we've, we've talked about that. We've talked about yeah. that before. Um, okay, this is a quick one. Did you hear about the the, uh, the the 125 people that died in Indonesia in the football yeah. stadium crush? Yeah, I did hear about this. It's oh, pretty tragic. Man, that's pretty wild, right? Yeah, wild. 125 people is a lot of people. 30 something children. Really? Oh man, that that I saw that. I was like, man, that is so stupid. Um like that that is that is painful to to read. Like it's a sporting event. Yeah, it's not, not it's not like less people have died in a day in World War II, you know what I mean? Mm. That is that yeah, is no, crazy. It's, yeah, it's um they need it, people need to sort this out. Like I swear, I don't know if it's you gotta I don't know, people get in such a frenzy over sport. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. I think it's a tribal thing. You, people, it, it starts. It's, it's 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 a it's a how we just it's um it's our new sort of instead of attacking each other's places, play sport, right? That's how it all sort of came about, right? It's sort of a, a mock war, except we're gonna just we're gonna figure it out on the soccer pitch, or we're gonna then, figure it out. Yeah, on, yeah, I guess so. You know, oh, it seems wild, but um, that was pretty upsetting. But I thought it was absolutely. Newsworthy. Mm. Um, and then the last thing, uh, try and wrap it up is, uh, it's another spacey thing. I can't stop. I just can't stop. Can't well, stop. I've got a spacey thing spot. for you after. So let's go. Oh, good. Okay. So it's a cryptocurrency backed company called Vast Space. Okay. What do they do? Plans artificial gravity. What? They're, they're, they're looking into artificial gravity. Um, there's some billionaire that's behind, uh, crypto firms such as Bitcoin Exchange, Mt. Gox. I've never heard of that before, MT space G-O-X. And he's a big deal. He's a big swinging dick and he's using and he's all these on- – uh, it's basically it's almost like sci-fi type stuff. Mm. So they, they've got people together. They're doing a, they're doing a summit 
I'm going to describe it as a summit. I've got all the best people in. Holy shit. Assembled a team, a world-class team, and they haven't made a press release about what they're actually doing, what, how they're going to do this. What right? do you think they're doing? Well, one, one, the most popular way of doing this is uh, there's, there's this thing called an O'Neill cylinder. Uh-oh. It's um, incredibly massive cylinders rotating in opposite directions. Yeah. And somehow yeah. that replicates gravity. Okay. And so uh, Jeff Bezos actually likes this. He's, okay, among, he's, a he's, a, he's a fan. So he's proposing using these for floating space settlements himself it, it, as part of his Blue Origin program. Right. But, but oh, the good. O'Neill cylinder needs to be 32 kilometres long mm. and 6.4 kilometres in diameter mm. for to work. Like on the, on the what? In space. Yeah, Okay. So the the problem is the scale of it. They're like, yeah, in, in theory it works great, mm. but you have to have this like ginormous cylinder. Yeah, you build it in space. It's kind yeah. of, I guess so. Yeah, um, you build it in space. But they're, 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 they're apparently pulling the trigger on this. Wow. And they've what, got what, the, what, To float cities? Is that the concept? Yeah, and because you need to actually do space travel, you need to – like not having gravity is – as we've said before, we've 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 evolved for four billion years on this planet, and we're we're quite accustomed to gravity. We quite enjoy it. Oh, I like it. We like it. You like it. Uh, everyone likes it. Everyone's a big fan. And then when Love you it. don't have it, that's when you you realise what you're missing out on. Oh no, I know. And there's another startup, um, Orbital Assembly Corporation, which has announced plans to build a space station with artificial gravity in 2025. Pop that in the calendar. 2025. Yeah, it's not far away at all, is it? Bloody hell. But what's the purpose of this? A hotel in space? No, no. It's um, it's actually so you need some form of anti-gravity to allow people to stay in space for a long period of time because you need that. You need the your, your bone density decreases 1%, I think, per week, I think it is. For every, I think that's the stat. Something that's why, like that. That's why all the aliens, when they come to Earth, they're all like skinny bodied, big heads. Yeah, they're all jelly, jelly, bloody jelly backs. Because if they, if they're so accustomed, if they get accustomed to no gravity, if they evolve for like another four billion years and just de-evolve and they're just jellyfish, they come to Earth. They're not going to be. They're going to look like little bitches when they get out of that spacecraft because they're going to be like oozing. Yeah, but they'll still fuck us up if they want to. Yeah, well, they probably just won't come down here, and they're going to send their robots and their diseases. Yep. They're not going to. They're not going to turn up. <laughs> they're not going to turn up. No, I, I, I quite like, like the idea of them not even picturing us as a threat and just coming down and just walking around, not even giving a shit. <laughs> um, and you had something for me, did you? Yeah. So on this day in 1957, Sputnik launched. Oh, really? So that was the first time I think that any man-made object had orbited the planet. That created the field of space law as uh, literally because mm. there was a principle of property law in that you own everything above the surface of your property up to the mm. heavens because mm. they didn't that's when they started property law they just didn't really they didn't they worry did. about what's up there yeah. cuz like what are we going to do with it. And then Sputnik started in, encroaching on everyone's property rights as it as it orbited the Earth, and that created as everyone allowed it, that created a field of international law because international law is just what states allow other people to do. No one raised an issue with it because the the US yeah. wanted to send up its own satellites, yeah. so it said, "Yeah, no, we're, yeah, do it, mate, do it. We've got our own Sputniks." Yep, <laughs> we're doing it as well. Now Google's around the moon. So on this day, wow. Yeah, I thought you'd enjoy that one. But uh, good job, man. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I didn't check the emails. Oh, well, there's probably hundreds upon thousands of emails. Should I check it now? Yeah, give it a check. Hang on, I'm just loading it up. Jeez, I hope there isn't anything there. Natalia hasn't reached out. I haven't checked the uh, that folder. Hang on, we do have we do have mail. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, it's been, it's been great. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Cheers.